Okay, so can you solve this equation? Well, hopefully you can. And if you can figure this thing out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Now, what type of uh, problem are we dealing with here? Well, uh, there's a couple different ways you can classify this problem. We are dealing uh, with these binomials, but binomials, these respective binomials, are part of a bigger class of things in mathematics and algebra called polynomials. So uh, technically, we're dealing with a polynomial equation here. So the whole idea is, can you solve this polynomial equation? What is x equal to? Again, if you can figure this thing out, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we're going to walk through the specific steps to solve this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It is my uh, true passion and calling to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that are struggling in math, okay? Uh, there is no such thing as a bad math student, so please do not give up on math. I'm going to tell you the three things you need in order to be successful in mathematics. The first is uh, you need a strong work ethic. In other words, you have to be willing to work hard, right? There is no shortcuts or easy way outs when it comes to learning math. You got to put in the work. So if you've been looking for you know, uh, little, you know, shortcuts and things that you can do to kind of escape the work. Well, stop looking. Uh, there is no such thing. And that's going to just cause frustration. So if you're willing to put in the work, that's awesome. Let's talk about the second thing you need. That's encouragement. Okay. You got to feel like, hey, is it going to be worth your while, you know, to put in this work? Okay. Because a lot of you have been, you know, actually studying hard and doing all the things that you should be doing, and you're still not getting the results. So you need to, uh, you know, have some encouragement so you don't quit. And right? I'm telling you, do not quit. What you need is this third part. This is the most important part. You need to be learning from someone or something that you actually understand. You need great math instruction. You see, math is a very technical subject, and uh, unfortunately, it can be taught in a very technical way, sometimes an overly technical way, where it just confuses people. And there's nothing more frustrating to be in a math class and be totally lost. The way I like to teach math is to explain it in a way where all people can get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the ASVAB, GED, SAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students have average notes. A lot of students have no notes. If you expect to do well in mathematics, you have to take great math notes. So you can use my notes in the meantime, but you have to learn how to take your own awesome notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer to this equation. We have x minus 1 times x minus 2 is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 2. And if you notice, right, we're, you know, pretty much the, the left and right hand side looks identical, except for these are minuses and these are pluses. But what is the answer? Well, the answer is x is equal to 0. That is the solution. So how did you do? Okay, well, if you got this answer right, let's go ahead and celebrate with a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you solved an awesome little algebra problem today. All right, so nice job. Let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. Okay, so here is our problem. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cut, uh, we need to do some uh, multiplication on both sides of the equation because we can't really tell what's going on. But these are factored, and you know uh, the first step we're going to have to do is see the actual terms. In other words, we're going to have to multiply this side or these two binomials, and then we're going to have to multiply these two binomials, and we're going to use the FOIL technique to do that. Now, hopefully you're familiar with FOIL. That stands for first, outer, inner, last, first, outer, inner, last. It's just a technique that you can use or that's taught in algebra to multiply one binomial times another binomial. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the result of using this particular FOIL technique. 
So first, we're going to multiply the first terms, so that'll be x times x, and then we're going to uh, multiply the outer terms, that'll be x times negative 2, and then the inner terms, negative 1 times x, and then the, uh, the last terms, which will be negative 1 times negative 2. Again, you should be familiar with the FOIL technique. If you're not familiar with the FOIL technique, you definitely need to do some brushing up on some basic algebra. So I'm going to suggest a couple of different courses um, that uh, you can look at. Uh, I'm going to probably um, uh, have you look at my Algebra 1 course first, okay? You know, if you're not at the Algebra 1 level and you're at pre-algebra, I do teach the FOIL technique in that course as well. I'm pretty sure I do because that uh, is part of pre-algebra. But anyways, I would go to start with my Algebra 1 course. Um, that's the best course for the problem that I'm doing right now. All right, so if you do the FOIL technique over here, you're going to end up with these terms. And then on the left-hand side, we end up with x squared minus 2x minus x plus 2. And then over here, we got x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2. Now, it looks like, you know, we're getting very similar results. But what we have to do is just take this problem step by step. So that's why it's important uh, in mathematics that you write out everything nice and clear one step at a time because you can easily get confused if you start missing uh, or you start skipping steps. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is combine like terms. So I have a negative 2x and a minus uh, x here. That's negative 3x. And you always want to write your, your uh, um, expressions in standard form, highest to lowest power. So x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then here I have a uh, plus 2x and x. These are like terms. So I can write this as x squared plus 3x plus 2. So we're, uh, you know, pretty close. And, and again, these look almost identical. And, you know, some of you might be tempted to kind of like say, oh, here's a 2, here's a 2 here. I can just get rid of these. And then I got x squared and x squared. I can do that. You don't want to do that necessarily, okay? Even though that is true, kind of show the steps. Show your teacher that you know what's going on. So let's go ahead and start moving uh, all the variables to the left and all the numbers on the right. That would be kind of the main idea here. Although we, are, we, we do have technically a quadratic equation, okay? So there's kind of a little technical thing, technical thing going on here. We have this x squared. So there's this thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra. It's very like mysterious sounding, but basically what this is indicating that this particular equation should have two solutions or will have two solutions. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second when we uh, solve this. But, you know, we are dealing with a quadratic equation right now, which a quadratic equation is a type of polynomial equation. So, again, we're going to kind of move all the terms over to the left. Uh, we're going to start, uh, if we're going to try to solve a quadratic equation, we want to set this equal to zero. But you can see when, when I subtract x squared from both sides, in other words, I need to get this x squared over here, they're basically going to cancel each other out. So when I do that, I'm left with 3x, negative uh, 3x plus 2 is equal to 3x plus 2. So I went from a quadratic equation down to a linear equation. Okay, so let's just go ahead and continue the problem solving uh, steps here. So at this point, I want to get all my variables to the left, all my numbers to the right. So I'm going to subtract uh, a 3x from both sides of the equation. In other words, I want to get this 3x over here with this negative 3x. And when we do this, I'm going to get a negative 6x plus 2 is equal to 2, right? So I'm adding down like so. All right, so at this point, how do I solve this problem? Well, I'm going to uh, get this 2 to the other side. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. And you're going to get negative 6x uh, <clears throat> is equal to 0. So when I divide both sides of the equation by negative 6, you're going to get x is equal to 0. So that is the answer. But let's just go ahead and talk about what's going on here. So x is equal to 0. Now, this here, we ended up with a quadratic equation. So x is equal to 0. We can consider it as a double root, okay? In other words, there are two solutions. The answers are 0 and 0, okay? But let's go ahead and just check this answer, x is equal to 0, into our original equation just to kind of verify that, in fact, it is correct. So here is our 0. So we'll plug in a 0 for x here, 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 and here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So 0 minus 1 is going to be negative 1. 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 1 plus times negative 2 
is positive 2, and 1 times 2 is a positive 2. So the left is equal to the right. That is a true statement. So this solution checks. But again, you know, a couple little technical, uh, technical things going on here with respect to this uh, problem, right? We went from a quadratic equation down to a linear equation. So, you know, there is a lot to know in mathematics. You know, there, there's, uh, this is uh, one of these things that, you know, for those of you out there that follow my other uh, videos on YouTube, uh, by the way, if you do watch my other videos, thank you very much. But I try to be a truth teller when it comes to mathematics, okay? Especially in high school level math, college level math. You know, I'm not going to be like, uh, hey, you know, you can learn it, you know, one, two, three. It's it's very easy. Uh, let's just kind of do a quick little three-minute lesson on this, three-minute lesson on that. I could give you a quick little tiny micro tutorial, and you'd feel pretty good about yourself, right? Because I would teach you how to solve a nice little basic easy problem. But you're not going to have the mastery, the total comprehensive you know, um, you know, level of understanding that you need to, uh, you know, tackle more sophisticated problems. Yeah, you might be able to do the basic level problems in your math course, but you know, that's going to be only maybe half of your course. You know, your teacher is going to be throw, uh, throwing in more challenging, advanced level problems, and the only way you're going to be able to get those problems correct is for you to really have a mastery of what's going on. That's why I'm, I say, hey, there is no shortcuts. And you got to be, you know, buckled down, taking great notes, practicing, practicing, practicing. It's not enough to watch me solve a problem, okay? I always like to use the analogy. If you wanted to get better at basketball, would you watch the TV all day? Would you watch NBA all day? Is that going to help you get better at basketball? No, of course not, right? You actually have to go practice. Now, if you say, all right, I'm going to practice uh, uh, basketball, and I'm going to practice 30 seconds a day. Now, I'm going to make a, uh, shoot the ball. If I make it one time, therefore, I am great at basketball. Of course, that's not the way it works, right? Math is the same way. Uh, just don't do one problem, and if you get it right, be satisfied that. You've got to practice a variety of different problems. I'm just telling you the truth. Um, you know, I'm telling you the path to go from point A to point B to be successful in mathematics. Okay, so again, if you need help with anything I'm talking about here, check out my Algebra 1 program. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.